Measures of Dispersion. This is related on my previous topic on statistics, which is the measures of central tendency. So, after ng measures of central tendency, ito na yung kasunod na topic, which is the measures of dispersion. So, we have actually three types of, me of measuring the dispersion of a certain data. Number one, yung range, yung tinatawag nating range. So, the range means the difference between the greatest data value and the least data value. So, from the word na difference, meaning may, sub may subtraction na magaganap. Meaning, ima-minus mo yung maliit na data value sa pinakamalaking data value. So, yung malaking number minus the small number. So, ganun yun para makuha yung range ng isang data or given data. So, for example, meron tayo ditong example na 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 9, 19, at saka 22. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 7 data or number data. And then, naka-arrange na siya. So, pag ang range kasi, kadalasan, kapag maghahanap ka ng greatest at saka yung least value, ina-arrange mo siya from the smallest to greatest or greatest to smallest. Pero since arrange na itong given sa atin, so no need na for that. Now, kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayo ditong 1 na least value at saka yung greatest value na 22. So, ibig sabihin yan, Ima-minus lang natin yung 1 sa 22. So, 22 minus 1. So, ganyan lang yan. So, 22 minus 1 is equals to 21. So, yung given data sa atin ay may range na 21. 22 minus 1. The greatest value minus the, the least value which is 1. So, 21. Another example is a combination of negative numbers and positive numbers. So, pag ganito ang mga klase ng uh, given problem, kailangan nyo muna talagang i-arrange from the least or from the greatest to the least or least to greatest. So, from here, or sa ating given problem, ang gagawin ko ay from the, from the least value to the greatest value, meaning from the negative numbers to the positive numbers. So, kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayo ditong Ang negative numbers kasi, kapag malaki yung number, mas maliit yun siya. Ganun yun, di ba? Sa negative numbers. So, ibig sabihin, sa lahat ng negative numbers na given, which is ang negative 8, negative 5, negative 12, at saka negative 1, ang pinaka may maliit na value ay ang negative 12. So, negative 12. And then, ang next ay ang negative 8. And then, next, negative 5. And then, next, negative 1. Then, for positive naman, maliit ay 4, and then 7, and then 11. So, ganito yung arrangement for number, or for letter B example. Basta tandaan, pag sa negative, mas malaki ang number, mas maliit ang value. Kahit 12 pa yung number na nakasulat dito, mas maliit pa rin yan siya kasi negative siya kumpara sa negative 8. Mas malaki yung negative 8 kaysa sa negative 12. So, among all of these negative numbers, mas maliit ang negative 12. Now, sa range naman to, di ba, ang range ay ang difference ng greatest value and the least value. So, yung greatest value natin yung positive 11. So, 11 minus negative 12. So, ganyan. So, 11 minus negative 12. Ang no, mangyayari, itong sign na to madidistribute dito. So, magiging, di ba, positive, ay negative times negative will be positive. So, magiging 11 plus 12. So, magiging addition na yan. Magiging, ma i-add mo na yung 12 sa 11. So, 11 plus 12 is equals to 23. So, the range for the given data for letter B is 23. 23 yung answer. So, ganun yung pag-solve kapag you're dealing with negative numbers and positive numbers. Another method for measuring dispersion is the standard deviation. So, the standard deviation means the set of numerical data that makes use of the amount by which individual data value deviates from the mean. So, ang standard deviation, nagbavaryan siya 
depende sa data. Dito sa standard deviation, we're considering each of the given data. Magbabari na lang yan kung population or sample ang given sa atin. Kasi we have two different formulas for solving the standard deviation of the population and the sample or sample data. So, yung symbol for standard deviation for population is this one. This is a sigma symbol, a Greek letter symbol for standard deviation for population. So, standard deviation is equals to the square root of summation of x minus mu raised to 2 over n. So, ang mu dito, if matatandaan nyo sa measures of central tendency, this is the symbol for the mean of the population, which is this one. Kasi nilagay ko na dito, oh, where sigma, sigma is the standard deviation for population, and this one, the mu, which is the mean of the population. And then, yung n dito is the number of numerical data. Yung ibig sabihin nito, kung ilan yung given value sa inyo. Example, kung meron kayong walong data, or walong number, or basta numerical number, kasi masusolve mo lang talaga ang standard deviation if yung given sa inyo na data ay in numbers or numerical data. Na yung x naman dito sa ating formula ay yung numerical data mismo. Yung every given number doon sa data na binigay sa inyo. Iko-consider yun for in solving the standard deviation. Now for sample naman, we have here letter S as the symbol for sample standard deviation. S lang yung gagamitin natin. S is equals to the square root of summation of x minus x bar raised to 2 all over n minus 1. So, yung x bar naman ay ang sample mean. Na pag sample naman, hindi lang divided by n. n minus 1 ang gagamitin nyo. Kaya pag mag-solve ka ng standard deviation, make sure to identify whether the given problem is a population or just a sample. Kasi kapag ang given sa inyo ay sample, meaning yung i-divide nyo dito sa taas na sa formula ay n minus 1. No, kapag population naman, n lang. So, magbabari talaga yung answer nyo. Malaking variation talaga yun. Bago ako magbigay ng sample for standard deviation, yung sample problem, i-discuss ko muna yung variance. Kasi connected actually yung standard deviation at saka yung variance. Kaya, para mag... Kung bibigyan ko ng sample, dire-diretso na lang yung pag-solve natin. So, so, for number 3, we have the variance, the last method on measuring the dispersion. So, the variance is the square of the standard deviation of the data. Yung symbol for variance, kasi nga yung meaning niya is square lang ng standard deviation, kaya yung symbol niya ay same lang sa standard deviation, which is the sigma. May square nga lang, kasi nga, the square of the standard deviation. The formula for the variance of the population ay iba sa the formula of the sample of the variance. Yung population, sigma raised to 2 is equals to summation of x minus mu raised to 2 all over n. Yung sa sample naman, S raised to 2 is equals to summation of x minus x bar raised to 2 all over n minus 1. So, dito lang sila actually nagkakaiba sa formula, yung n at saka yung n minus 1. Which is, actually, kung mapapansin nyo, the same lang yung formula sa standard deviation. Meron lang talagang square kasi diba supposed to be ang formula for standard deviation ay ganito, may square. Diba? Summation. Halimbawa, for population, itong solve natin. Ganyan, over n. Diba? Ang sabi kasi, the square of the standard deviation yung meaning ng variance. So, meaning, i-square mo lang to this one, and then, square mo din this one. So, since may square na dito, and then may square din dito, which is here, so, makancel na, so, mawawala na yung square root. So, maiwan is, sigma raised to 2 is equals to summation of x minus mu, raised to 2 all over n. So, mawawala lang actually yung etong square root na symbol. Kaya ito yung natira. Kaya ito yung formula for variance of the population and this one naman is for the sample. So, ito na yung sinasabi kong problem 
na magsosolve tayo using the standard deviation method at saka yung variance. Of course, sinali na lang din natin yung range kasi very short lang naman yung computation for range. So, ang sabi dito sa ating problem ay find the range, standard deviation, and variance of the given sample data. Kung mapapansin nyo, sinabi dito na sample data. Ibig sabihin, sample ang kinoconsider natin na data dito, hindi population. So, yun yung una-una ninyong tatandaan or una-una ninyong iti-check sa isang given problem kapag you're dealing with population ba or a sample. So, ang sa atin dito ay sample. So, yung given data sa atin or sample data ay 2, 5, 8, 10, at saka 15. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data. 5 numerical data. Of course, sa range, yung una, yung susolve natin for range, di ba, ay the greatest value minus the least value. So, no need na to arrange kasi naka-arrange na yung ating numbers at saka positive lang naman silang lahat. Now, yung pinakamalaking number obviously ay ang 15. And then, minus the least number or the least value which is the 2, number 2. So, yung range ay 15 minus 2, which is 8, which is equals to 13. So, meaning the range of the sample data ay 13. So, ganun lang yung range. So, sa standard deviation, mas maganda kapag nakatable yung data mo. From lowest to greatest value or the greatest value to lowest value. So, actually, yung tawag sa mga data dito ay yung x. Diba? Ganun, ganun yung nakalagay doon sa ating definition. Yung x is the numerical data, which is the 2, 5, 8, 10, at saka 15. So, bakit ganito yung mga table? Bakit may x minus x bar? Actually, sinulat natin na ganito para madali na natin ma-determine yung square, yung square root ng value mismo nito. Para madali na natin isolve yung standard deviation. Kasi yung mga symbol dito, ito yung mga kasali sa formula ng standard deviation for a given sample data. So, first things first, kapag sa standard deviation, kapag magsasolve for standard deviation, ang una-una mo talagang isasolve ay ang x bar o yung mean. For a sample data, ang symbol for mean ay x bar. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, to find the mean, ay add all the given data and then divided by how many data are there. Example, di ba meron tayong 2, 5, 8, 10, tsaka 15. So, i-add mo lang lahat yan. Tapos, i-divide mo lang kung ilang number meron, kung ilan silang lahat. So, meron tayong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, i-add mo silang lahat and then divided by 5. So, meaning, x bar is equals to 2 plus 5 plus 8, plus 10, plus 15, all over, or divided by 5, which is equals to 8. So, if you calculate this one, this given equation, 8 ang lalabas. So, meaning, ang ating x bar, o yung mean natin, ay 8. Na, anong mangyayari? Anong mangyayari sa 8? So, gagamitin natin yan dito. So, Diba yung x daw minus the x bar. So, ito yung x. Ito naman yung x bar, which is 8. Ibig sabihin niyan, 2 minus 8. Ganun lang yun. 2 minus 8 is equals to negative 6. Now, next naman, 5 minus 8, which is equals to negative 3. Another, 8 minus 8, which is equals to 0. The next, 10 minus 8 is equals to 2. 15 minus 8 is equals to 7. Yung next na gagawin natin ay, itong value na nakuha natin dito ay i-square, kukunin lang natin yung square nila. I-square lang natin. So, ibig sabihin, itong consider natin, ito lang mga negative 6, negative 3, 0, 2, 7. Kasi, x minus x bar raised to 2. Kung ano yung sagot dito sa second column, ikukunin lang natin yung square nila, tapos yun na yung value ng third column. For our first data, lumabas na yung x minus x bar natin ay negative 6. And then, kunin mo natin yung square niya, i-raise to 2 natin. Negative 6 raised to 2 is positive 36. Next ay negative 3, 
raised to 2, which is equals to positive 9. Another naman ay 0. Now, 0 raised to 2 is still 0. Next is 2 raised to 2, which is 4. And then 7 raised to 2 is equals to 49. So actually, para mas mabilis na lang tayo mag-solve for standard deviation, di ba meron tayo itong summation of x minus x bar raised to 2. Ibig sabihin lang yan, kailangan lang natin i-add lahat ng mga nakuha nating value dito para at least sa uh, standard deviation, mag-direct substitution na lang tayo. So ganito yan. Kukunin natin ang summation of x minus x bar raised to 2, which is equals to, i-add mo lang actually itong 36 plus 9 plus 0 plus 4 plus 49. So, kapag i-add natin itong lahat, ang lalabas na value ay 98. 98. So, meaning yung total ng x minus x bar raised to 2 ay 98. So, gamit itong formula for standard deviation, which is S for the sample data, ang lalagay na lang natin ay, since nakuha na natin yung value ng summation of x minus x bar raised to 2, which is 98, lalagay na lang natin na 98 yung numerator natin. And then, yung n naman natin ay kung ilan, yung ilang number or ilang data meron tayo, which is meron tayong limang data, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5. And then, minus 1 since ang given sa atin ay sample data. Kapag population ang given sa inyo, sa given problem, n lang ang sa baba. Hinwala ng minus 1. Now, ito, since sample kasi, kaya may minus 1 pa sa baba. So, s is equals to the square root of 98 divided by 4, which is equals to 4.8. 95. So, meron tayong standard deviation dito sa ating given sample na 4.95. And then, yung range naman ay 13. So, next, we'll solve for the variance of the data. Ang formula for variance ay, since ang given sa atin ay sample, kaya S to dito. Diba ang variance ay the square of the standard deviation? Since nakuha na natin yung standard deviation, which is 4.95 kanina, we can also solve now for the variance. Pero diba, ganito yung formula for variance, which is S raised to 2 is equals to summation of X minus X bar raised to 2 all over N minus 1. Diba yung value kanina for our numerator, which is this one, ay 98. Diba? Divided by n minus 1. Yung n minus 1 natin ay 4. Kasi meron tayong 5 na n or na number of numerical data minus 1 which is 4. So, same lang sila, ba? Actually, same lang sila dito sa s. Wala lang square root. Kasi nga, matatanggal na siya kasi kapag i-square natin to, kapag ganyan, mawawala na ang itong square root na sign. Kaya, 98 over 4 na lang for the variance. So, S raised to 2, or S squared, is equals to 98 divided by 4, which is also equals to 24.5. Now, ito yung ating variance for our given problem. So, we have 13 for our range, 4.95 naman for standard deviation, and 24.5 naman for our variance. So, ganito yung pag-solve ng range, standard deviation, at saka variance ng given sample data. So, kayo nang bahala kapag population naman. Actually, madali lang naman. Yung pinagkaiba lang nila ay yung denominator for the standard deviation at saka yung variance. Yung population sa denominator, wala nang minus 1. Sa sample naman, merong minus 1. Basta just be careful on identifying what kind or type of data you are dealing with. Population ba or a sample? So, that's it for our measures of dispersion tutorial for today. I hope you've learned something. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you for watching!